Hello, welcome to ITU Telecom World 2011 here in Geneva in Switzerland. I'm talking with Musa Ben Hamadi, who is the Minister of Post, Information Technology and Communications in Algeria. Mr. Ben Hamadi, welcome. What do you think are the principal issues facing the ICT sector in your home country of Algeria and elsewhere in the world? Effectivement, le, la croissance du développement. Well, yes, in fact. The growth of ITCs is slowing down. Nevertheless, and to maintain this development to serve various populations, it would be appropriate to go towards a much more integration at a regional or continental level. I'm thinking of Africa here. Also, it would be necessary to have a greater involvement of equipment manufacturers with a broader offer of added value services, assistance also of local operators, more particularly in emerging economies or countries going through economic difficulties, so that this uh, ITC development can be maintained to serve all populations. But there also needs to be a form of assistance in content production so that local populations can express themselves, can give a value to their own products, their crafts, and their professions, which are not always very developed, so that this content can truly be enhanced uh, through uh, ITCs and uh, the ICTs, I'm sorry, and the other challenge that uh, we need to take on board to pursue this development, uh, which is essential for all of society, that there should be greater concordance on the use of these ICTs. Because it's unimaginable to say that one part of mankind cannot have any access. Thus, there is this need of going to sharing, to an inclusive approach, and not a fragmentation by class or by region, and thus to be able to sustain what exists now and avoid the digital divide between developed societies and developing societies or less developed societies, which would lead to a complete break between the various components of mankind, a break or a fracture, which would certainly endanger all the advantages of these technologies. This ITU telecom world is very different to the ITU events of the past. What will you be taking back with you from the show? What are your expectations? And do you have any particular message that you would like to give to the delegates and the visitors here today? Algeria, for the first time, has a stand at Telecom in which we have various players, of operators, manufacturers, also young entrepreneurs, uh, startups, accompanied by our Ministry of Information Technology and Communication, in order to enable them to be heard, to show their know-how, and of being able to present their products and ideas in this event. Algeria has always participated in the telecom events taking part in the fora and in the workshops. But this year, we have decided to participate with a stand in order to be able to highlight the Algerian experience and also to create a space for exchanges and communication between Algerian participants and other participants in telecom. The message that I would like to express here is the complementarity of the participants, of those who are present with stands or presenting products, and should lead to greater complementarity between the various players. There is competition, which is perfectly normal, between integrators, operators, manufacturers, but there is a need of going towards greater complementarity in order to be able to save our energies we need to ensure that these technologies develop in respect of nature, of sustainable development uh, to serve mankind. 
and also with or to ensure a spirit of exchanges which is part of ITU. How can ICT promote not just economic development but also social development in your home country and elsewhere in the world? The key word that I would use is to enhance, to enhance our know-how, to enhance our products, to enhance our riches. And when I speak of we, I'm speaking of Algeria, but I'm speaking of all mankind, of all countries. Uh, ICTs play a key role. Originally, we saw the development of computer technology for data processing and gradually access to information. And now the ICTs make it possible to have an exchange and a, in a networked structure with information on products and also be able to transmit the know-how to uh, those who need it through the net and of having this better seen to be able to use it as best possible. ICTs, of course, take part in economic and social development, but the final word is how to make life easier for the citizen, how to make life more comfortable while enabling the competitivity which is necessary and natural and which has existed almost since the beginning of mankind. What difficulties did you find in extending connectivity out to the rural and remote areas of Algeria? And what lessons that you learned there can be applied in other parts of the world? I think that the first difficulty that Algeria met with was to reform the sector of cold, that was called post and telecommunications. Once that was done, as of 2000, we were confronted with the difficulties of the size of the country. There's over 2.5 million square kilometers with a young population, a population that has ambitions and wants access to know-how, to leisure. The difficulty was to cover our national territory. Today, we've been able to implement over 50,000 kilometers of uh, optic fiber, but this remains insufficient. We have regions or cities or towns that are not sufficiently connected. We have populations all along the borders in the upper plateaus and the mountain region that don't have a quality access to Internet services or ICTs. This is a difficulty we must overcome through a, an aggressive and determined policy and the public authorities are financing this effort. We have implemented universal service for telephony or telephone services in general, and we're trying to extend this to internet access to ensure a minimum bit rate for every citizen and for any uh, town of over 1,000 inhabitants. The efforts that are being deployed right now will make it possible to have a fair and equal coverage throughout the whole country to avoid any inequalities. All large countries have known these difficulties. We took uh, inspiration and we are in contact with Canada, which has a very large territory. We're in contact with Malaysia, that has a uh, territory which is fractured. We're in contact with Finland also. And to be able to benefit from their experience, and to avoid committing the same mistakes and be able to leapfrog the coverage throughout the country and offering this to all citizens. What do you think is the principal threat to society from the enormous upsurge in cyber criminality that we're witnessing? You're quite right. This phenomenon of cyber crime is a problem for all regions of the world. There is the will of having more democratic and universal access to the net, but this is accompanied with a risk of terrorist attacks or attacks of servers or information sites. 
which generates certain doubts or misgivings in the minds of our leaders. We are working for this phenomenon to disappear at a national level, of course, and in regional international fora, such as ITU, to cover this at the international level. We can't say that it'll be totally eradicated. It's unrealistic to have that approach, but we're working in the education, the education of the individual. The individual must be made responsible and must be the key player to be able to limit this situation. Parents play a key role in educating their children when they're younger, of preventing access to certain sites with harmful content or content which is inappropriate for children. But operators must also play a role when they're offering information or content, when they make it available, they need to take measures in order to be able to uh, protect and ensure that there is no unauthorized access, especially as this phenomenon can impact on international exchanges in business exchanges. It's not only a local issue, this is a transnational phenomena. Thus, everyone needs to participate. I'm thinking of banks, insurance companies, the must to take part in this effort of deploying appropriate tools, preventive tools, to avoid these attacks and unauthorized access. Can you tell us one thing that you think needs to happen if we're ever going to get any nearer to the goal of providing more global citizens with more meaningful access to connected technology? The key word that comes to my mind is broadband. The second key word is sharing. The third key word is to have equal access for all mankind. Minister Ben Hamadi, thanks very much indeed.